Hey guys and welcome back to my world. As you can see, I am trapped in the nether. I, I am in uh, so, uh, in adventure mode, so I can't actually break any blocks. Uh, so there's no way for me at all to actually get off this island. I can't break the blocks, um, the trap door is closed, and I need to get to that structure right over there. So the only thing I've been able to find is this chest. Now inside the chest, I have a void walking potion. Now it is a, pos a poison two potion. Now what it says, it brings the drinker to a state of near death. Side effects often include death. Okay, so let me take that potion. So it would appear that this is the only real option I have is to drink the potion to see what this void walking is all about. So let's quickly guzzle down this potion. Okay, so as can be expected, this potion is actually poison poisoning me. Um, why am I? Okay, let me, get to, oh, let me get some more of this poison while while we're here. Okay, okay. So you can see. Oh, I am in a state of near near death, and it says, "Oh, you have one, uh, so many seconds to possess a mob." Now, which mob can I possess? Uh, I can't do the zombie pigman. Uh, so, whoops, and I died. Okay, so I took too long to actually uh, possess a mob. So let's really fast forward the process. As you can see, I'm back again. I have to possess a mob, but these ones. There we go, this little green sparkles. So obviously I can possess this mob. So let me give it a try. Yes, I am now the actual blaze. And as you can see, I now have a little menu over here which will allow me to actually control the movement of the bla uh, of the blaze. So I'm going to try and actually fly uh, towards that um, that structure over there. Now, as you, as you can see, this actually uses the new... Um, uh, game mode 3 or spectator mode in uh, Minecraft that came out with 1.8 uh, and uh, yeah by actually using by actually using the entity data I'm you are able to actually uh, change the uh, motion data of a mob so that it can move in real time in any direction that you actually want it to move in so in all for all intents and purposes I am now actually a uh, a a blaze okay so you'll see i just need to go east north east south west uh and so forth so uh, i am just going to get right up to these stairs like so you can see i can go up as well um and i go south a bit uh i need to go down the reason i'm using the entity the entity data uh to do the motion is so that i don't actually get teleported through walls okay because that quite often will happen so i can actually go up these stairs by going up oopsie up all right, so let me get out. So if I just hit the shift key, you can see that I am now um, out of the out of the mob, and I have escaped that island over there. Okay, but I'm still still kind of stuck over here. So I need to get through this landfall. So the scene that seems as if this was actually, um, you know, it, it's blocked up. So how am I going to do that? Um, there must be a way. Oh, hang on. There's creepers over here. So I've got some more of this void walking potion. So if we drink the void po walking potion, let's see. Maybe I can. Yes, it's sparkling green. I can possess the creeper. Okay, excellent. So I'm now possessing a creeper. Now, uh, same thing goes. I can. Uh, we'll just go east. Uh, that's perfect. Uh, north. No, south. 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 South, south, and uh, we're gonna stop. Um, and should we go east? Okay, can't get east. So just yeah, go a little bit south again. No, north again. Uh, stop, and we go east. This should do it. And then I'm going to go boom, yay! And uh, <laughs> I just actually blew a massive hole in here. And that's it. I am now able to actually escape. Uh, oops. <laughs> well, in time, I will be able to escape this dastardly trap that was set. Let's see if I can get parkour out of this. Yes! And that's it. So there's really uh, three parts to this main mechanic. So this is a really kind of a complete mechanic that I actually uh, made here. So uh, the first thing is you would see is that uh, when I was near death, so I had one bar of health left, um, I, was, I was then put into spectator mode. Okay, now um, that will only work if I am under the influence of a poison 
Okay, so if I do uh, damage myself to a half a bar of health, um, I will not go into spectator mode unless I have drunk a poison. Now to do that, the first thing I'm doing is um, I've, I'm going to be testing to see if I have a poison effect on me. Okay, so to do that, um, I'm going to be using a scoreboard uh, because when you're using a scoreboard, you can actually match uh, partial NBT data of the player. Okay, so I created a scoreboard objective, called, uh, a dummy objective called Poison. Okay, and um, I'm going to add scoreboard players set at all who has uh, set their Poison score to 2 if they have an active effect on them of ID 19 B. Now, ID19 is the poison effect, and the B, uh, I just add, uh, when you're using partial MBT data matches, you need to specify whether it's a byte, whether it's a floating integra, and so forth. Um, it's advanced MBT stuff, but just when you're doing that, you need to add a B. Okay, right, so if I have a poison on me, okay, I will have a scoreboard score of 2 for, uh, for that player. Okay, um, then right... Uh, at the, at the end here, I will be removing one poison score from in all players that has a minimum poison score of one. So what that means is I'll have every while I've got poison on me, I'll I'll get this will set it to two, and this will remove one. So I'll always have at least a score of one for poison. That means when the effect wears off, this removal of the of the poison will then clear the scoreboard, uh, and I will no longer have poison on me. Okay, cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using a scoreboard health. Okay, now this is one of the built-in uh, scoreboard objectives that Minecraft, Minecraft has. So scoreboard uh, objectives, add health, um, health, and it literally is just health. Okay, so the objective, it's not a dummy objective, it's not a stat, it's health. So what that does, it'll on the sidebar display the amount of health that I have. Okay. So what I've got going on here is I'm going to set the all players uh, all players to go game mode 3 which is spectator mode if their health is a minimum of 1 and is no more than 1 so no no more than 1 and no less than 1 no than 1 um, and they have a scoreboard poison of minimum 1 so that under the influence of poison <laughs> and they have one block of a one half a heart left then only will i be set to game mode three okay then i'm going to start the countdown so anybody who has the, exactly the same parameters health of half a heart okay under the influence of poison i'm going to set their countdown to 200 ticks okay uh, i am then going to remove one tick from anybody who has a countdown score of minimum one i'm going to remove one from that countdown and that causes the clock to run so when i'm when i'm um got I've, I've got 200 ticks to possess a mob you'll see this is the countdown that runs okay um so when that counter reaches zero okay i will i'm going to kill the player so kill at at entities let's just actually be at all not every entity score countdown uh minimum one score countdown one so whenever anybody's score is exactly one uh you will then get killed now the only people who will be getting this countdown is the people who who has a health of half a heart and is under the influence of poison so this is before you if so you have that amount of time before you get killed um so you have to possess a mob in that amount of time okay cool so that is it now right at the bottom here it is just the titles okay so um i'm just going to be displaying you know the little title that says how, how you that you need to possess the mob i'm just going to display it for zero in uh, zero fade in five seconds zero fade out okay uh i only want the subtitle so they want the smaller text so i'm just going to be using a blank main tech and um, main title and then my subtitle just has a bunch of stuff in it uh plus the actual scoreboard counter that's counting down okay so that's just that bit okay now the next bit so first of all we now we are now in uh, game mode three and we now need to possess a mob so now we need to determine how to actually detect if i am possessing a mob now we're going to make a couple of assumptions here okay we are going to assume that if a player is in game mode three and they are within a radius a zero block radius of a mob that they will actually be uh, possessing a mob all right so the first thing we're going to do 
is we're going to see if um, we're going to be executing at all players in game mode 3. So only if you're in game mode 3. We're going to do a nested execute and we can execute at any entity type not a player that is a radius of, I can actually do zero here, as a radius of zero. So when that player is in exactly the same block as an entity, that entity will then set the scoreboard scored for players for the player in a radius of, this was a test, so the player a radius of zero, that is in a mode three, is going to set the possess scoreboard objective that I created as a dummy to two. Okay, so it just sets it to two. And then over here, um, directly after that, it's going to remove one point from any player that has a possess score of at least one. So it sets it to two and it removes one, meaning that I am no longer... Um, in if I'm no longer in within a zero block radius of a uh, a mob, it will then reset the possess score to zero. Okay, so this is important. So if I'm possessing a mob, I will always have a score of one for zero. Next, if I am possessing a mob, so if I am within a zero block radius of a particular mob, for example, over here you can see. Um, I'm, oh, that is why I didn't reset. So um, if I'm in, in a execute at all mode three, execute at type uh, equals blaze radius zero, I'm going to set the player's scoreboard um, countdown to zero. So remember over here, when, the, when it gets to uh, countdown one, I get killed. Well, what I'm doing is when I'm possessing a mob, I'm actually setting that score to zero. So it completely ignores it and I do not die. Okay, so now I'm possessing a mob. We know that I'm possessing a mob. If I leave the mob, I will it will I will no longer be possessing the mob by the scoreboard telling me that. I've set the countdown to zero so that I don't die. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to set which kind of mob I am actually uh, possessing. So I'm going to exactly the same. I'm going to do nested execute execute at uh, at any player that's in mode three, um, that is uh, within a zero block radius of a blaze. Set their mob score so then once again mob score over here is a uh, scoreboard objective a dummy object uh, object of create objective i've created to one okay if i'm possessing a creeper which is over here i set it to two so now i know that i'm possessing a mob what kind of mob i'm possessing it okay um so that i can now run various other commands on that particular mob now um you can see over here sets the game mode when exiting the mob so now I'm going to reset the game mode when a player has a scoreboard mob of one, which means I have recently possessed a, mo a mob. Um, I'm not going to be worrying about which mob it is. It's going to be any mob, so it's minimum one. And I've got a score possess of zero. Remember, the possess means that I am no longer within a zero block radius of a mob. So if I'm possessing a mob, um, I will be in, in, in a, zero, uh, a zero block radius. If I'm not possessing a mob, I will no longer be in a zero radius. So this will then set my game mode to two. So when I exit the mob, I just get a game mode to two again. Okay. Um, and then here I'm just resetting the mob score. Exactly the same thing. Scoreboard player set at all who has a mob score of one and and has a score possesses zero so which means i have recently been in a mob but i'm no longer in a mob i'm going to set my mob score to zero just so that i no longer get uh the option to control the mob okay and then exactly the same thing as that i'm just going to reset um the mob score uh the, the direction that the mob is moving in, which is the next thing we're going to get to, which just means uh, once I exit the mob, the mob is no longer going to move, be moving in any kind of direction and will be have its own full power of movement again. Okay, so that's part two. Now, part three, so there's really four parts to this. Part three is the actual control of it. Okay, so first thing first is I am going to be doing a, a towel roll. So I'm going to do a towel roll very specifically made for uh, each mob. Uh, in this case, mob, uh, I'm going to do a towel roll at all score mob equals one, score mob uh, minimum one equals one, and my mode is three. And this is the blaze control. So it just allows me to go up, down, left, right, forward, backwards. Okay. Over here, I've got the creeper control, and you can see I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to do the towel roll for anybody who's got a mob score of two. And the only difference is it does a creeper control doesn't have up and it doesn't have down, but it does have explode. 
Okay. Um, the, uh, the other thing I'm also doing is I'm doing possession particles. So I'm going to be executing at all players in mode 3. I'm going to be executing at the type blaze. R equals 20. I'm going to play the happy villager particles. Okay, so that's the little green sparkly bits and the creeper. So it just basically means, and I'm going to be forcing it, which means it's going to be uh, viewable from a, from a long, far distance. Okay, so that just shows me which mobs I can actually pro uh, possess. Okay, now what these, um, what the actual Talros do, they, all they do is they actually set um, a scoreboard objective. Okay, so you can see execute at player, scoreboard player set at E, type not player, R equals zero, the direction. Now direction is once again a scoreboard objective, a dummy objective that I have created. So I've created a number of um, directions. So for example, uh, direction two is, if you have a look here, is an entity data and the motion. So I'm changing the, the Z motion to 0 0.1 blocks. Okay, and I'm just changing the rotation so that the mob will look in that direction as well, so I can see where I'm going. So when I hit the towel roll, the towel roll sets the mob's direction score to two, okay, which will then change its entity data for motion in the direction that I want to go. So these are just all of them. Okay, so this is north, south, east, west, up, and down. Okay, so as you can see here, this is up. As it's, it's direction one, so entity data change the uh, motion for that entity to up. Okay, so I'm using entity data for that. Um, well, I'm trying to think. This is a quite actually quite an advanced thing to do, but yeah, this will work anywhere at all in the world now. Um, I can now possess any any blaze, no matter where in the world the blaze is, and I can. Um, possess any creeper. So all I need to do to add new mobs to this is just add the, the control for it. So first of all, add a new towel raw for it, add the particles for it, and then just add a um, set the mob that you want it to be. Cool, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching. This uh, world will be up for download. So you, in theory, uh, you can just log into the world and you will end up right over here. Okay, and then you can try it out for yourself. So yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. And as always, I will uh, check you all later.